And welcome to this video which is about the software development of the dome controller and the dome driver. Um, I think I'll have to make more than one software video uh, and in this video I'm going to sort of cover the introduction and the concepts and probably get as far as showing you a working uh, demonstration uh, dome driver that you can uh, you know get hold of the code from me and uh, you can actually build for yourself. Um, but what I want to do at this point is I just want to introduce a few concepts and give you some links uh, and uh, there will be some links uh, that I refer to. I'll put them in the description below the video. But um, the, the whole uh, thing about the dome driver is that it is an ASCOM d dome driver. Now ASCOM is uh, a standard, it's uh, uh, astronomy common object model and um, the the man behind ASCOM is uh, an amazing guy called Bob Denny who is uh, he's a bit of a legend really in the industry and he is the inventor of astronomy common object model and it's been around now I think since about uh, 1999 um, but uh, you'll see from this sort of home page of ASCOM that there is a classic ASCOM and now a thing called ASCOM Alpaca that has been uh, been brewing, if you like, since 2018. So it's quite new. And um, the old, the, the classic version relies on the Windows operating system, the Windows Common Object Model, Windows Com. And, um, but the Alpaca uh, initiative uh, uses uh, a thing called HTTP REST, which is uh, a, 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 an interface that works across the network or the inter internet, if you like. And um, it, it opens up the world to have um, controllers that are not running, or drivers, should we say, that are not running uh, necessarily on the Windows platform. Um, and so this has enabled me to be able to write a driver that's running on the Raspberry Pi, as you've seen in the previous videos. So um, I'll let you, you know, find out more. But if you really want a great introduction to what Alpaca is about, then Bob Denny himself is here. Uh, I've just got a screen, you know. I've stopped the video here in a YouTube video and he uh, I'll, I'll give a link to this talk. He gives a, a, a presentation where he covers, you know, what ASCOM is about and what what Alpaca is about. And it's absolutely uh, excellent introduction. And I would thoroughly recommend that you have a look at that. So the reason why I'm quickly showing you uh, this web page is that the device driver uh, written in Python um, presents, if you like, a web interface uh, to the world. And of course, the uh, device driver uses uh, HTTP uh, calls through REST to, um, you know, to, to do the communication. And REST means representational state transfer. And um, it, it's, it's a, a way that you can now pass objects around in a textual notation across uh, local area networks or, or the, uh, or the uh, internet. So we're using in this, in this code, um, Bob used Flask, which is a really good um, web architecture, web framework uh, for Python. And I am already familiar with it because I used it, I, or I do use it uh, in my own uh, development for websites using Python. And I thoroughly recommend it. And built on top, is uh, Flask REST X, which is an extension for Flask. And that's what really allows us to, to use this framework, the whole thing to, um, you know, to work with, with this uh, whole Alpaca uh, system. So um, I, I'll show you, I'll put these links uh, in the, uh, you know, below the video with everything else. But you don't have to, if you're, if you're going to take my code and you want to adapt it to your own implementation because it's already working and written um, for the dome uh, as a kind of um, uh, an, you know a, a sort of simulator you don't actually need to really understand the flask but I would say it's worth getting into uh, if you want to understand more to see how it works there's also if you really want to understand flask there uh, is an amazing python teacher on uh, YouTube called Corey Schaefer. He is absolutely amazing. He's just 
easily the best Python educator. And I've, I've never seen better programming videos in all the years I've been programming. And he has a whole series of Flask and it's superbly done. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, maybe I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link to that as well. But Corey Schaefer is incredible. I just finish off this introductory video with a quick demo of uh, the, the device driver actually uh, running. In fact, the, the demonstration driver uh, software, which is the software I'll be sharing um, for anybody that wants to, uh, you know, actually uh, write their own implementation of this. So what I'm doing here is I'm not actually talking to my Raspberry Pi uh, version. I'm just running a, a local host version that's running on my local computer here and um, so uh, this runs up um, a website uh, interface um, that, that is sort of built into the driver if you like and um, I can actually set up the the devices um, that are here and I can also look at and run the various uh, methods and properties of the dome or rotator or whatever interface and so if I click um, to the dev uh, dome device API link here um, it uh, runs uh, into this page which is showing you um, a, a, an interface um, with a, a tool called swagger and again I'll put a link to this it's um, as you can see it allows you to um, <clears throat> to visualize or interact with APIs resources without having to implement logic in place. So it allows you effectively to run the methods and properties of the interface. So as you can see, here's list. Here's all the things that you can you can do and read and write to um, for for the dome, as I've mentioned before. So I can actually, uh, for example, exercise this. So if, I've just run this freshly. So the device is not connected. So if I want to read the connected state, I would just read this, uh, I would get the connected state and you can just try out the property. Okay, and then I just execute it and it's returned down here, the value false because the, the device is not yet connected. So if I was to actually then run the connected property and say connect, so I'll try out this put method and I'll set the connected value to true and then execute it. It's run. And if I now go back and reread the get for the connected, so I'll re you see it's false at the moment, I'll re-execute it and it's now true. Okay, so I can do things like read, um, you know, uh, read the at home property or do anything. I can do anything I like. I can, I can send it off to an azimuth. Now, what's running here is just a demo. It's not actually, um, you know, the implementation logic for my Raspberry Pi, for my motors and my mirror detection system. All that is in the actual Raspberry Pi version. But that is just a, um, I just reconnect to it through a different IP address. And I'll be explaining all about that. So, um, so uh, this is, you know, where I'll finish this particular um this particular video, uh, just a, an, in, an interface, uh, an introduction, I beg your pardon. So I hope that's uh, whet your appetite for what's to come. And I'll go into more detail in the next video.